Hi, Dave Bracetti here. I'd like to show you a couple of reasons why I like Tinker. It has a physics feature, so you can have objects that drop or you can apply forces to objects and they behave as they would in the real world following the laws of physics. And you can clone actors so that you don't have to duplicate actors and have a lot of duplicate uh, scripts. Uh, let's look at how that works. Here's the stage and I'm going to say when the play button is clicked then we will start physics. Good. Now let's add an actor and I'm going to find something like this ball here and add it I'll make it a little smaller, move it up to the top, watch what happens when I run this. It falls, sort of naturally, it even bounced a little bit, and you can adjust the bounciness. Now I want to get something that can shoot those balls. There's a cannon in here that ought to do the job. <laughs> so look what's happened. The cannon is also subject to those uh, to gravity. Kind of fell and rolled around. So um, the first thing I want to do for that is make it static. So set static to true. Uh, static means unchanging, and in this case, it means not subject to these rules of physics. Let's see, it's still moving and that's because I haven't applied this yet. So that should stop it moving and then I'll just need to uh, turn it around the way I want it here, which would be about like that. And I'm going to make it quite a bit smaller. Put it here. I'm going to make the ball smaller still and, and put it here. Uh, I want to, when I click on the cannon, I want, the, I want a new ball to fire out of it. So what I can do is use this cloning. So I say, create a clone. And that's under flow. And I want to create a clone of the sports balls, but I'm going to rename that to ball. Back to here, create a clone of ball. Let's see how that works. Okay, good. It creates a clone. And I also want to move it to here, so I'm going to watch these numbers as I move the mouse cursor to the point I'm interested in. So that's about minus 250, minus 135. So let's do, uh, we'll make a script for the ball. And there's an event that happens when a clone is uh, created. So it's here where we will go to x, y. I've forgotten those numbers. Uh, minus 250, minus 130. Minus 130. Okay, let's try this. Good. Um, so that's kind of an unimpressive cannon, wouldn't you say? Let's apply a force to the ball after we put it in the cannon. And that's under physics. Here's apply force. And um, straight up is zero degrees, to the right is 90, somewhere in between is about 45. So I'm going to apply a force at 45 degrees, and I'm going to experiment here. I'll start with 100. Oh, not bad. I think a little bit more would be called for. OK, 
Okay, maybe somewhere in between would give us a good parabola there. I lowered it, but it went higher. I don't think this performs consistently. I think the Tinker folks will see this and tell us what's going on. Uh, all right, so I kind of like these balls not to pile up. I want them to, to go away after a while. So um, flow, delete this clone. There it is. But I don't want to delete it right away. I want to wait a moment. So I'll wait a couple of seconds and then delete the clone. Also, this one shouldn't be here in the beginning. Let's fix that now. I'm going to hide it. Events here. I grabbed that at the wrong place. I'm going to go to looks and I'll say hide and then when the clone occurs I'm gonna go to the right place and then show it there we go and notice it disappears Okay, so that's a couple of reasons I like Tinker, the physics feature and the clone feature.